start with Council Bill 53, which is an act pursuant to Section 6112, 612 of the Howard County Charter and Section 4.201A of the Howard County Code, approving the execution by Howard County, Maryland of one or more installment purchase agreements to finance the acquisition of land for a new elementary school in the Turf Valley neighborhood of Ellicott City, Maryland, and the payment of any related costs in the aggregate maximum amount of $6 million. Um, and this agreement expires on 12-14-20, and uh, then again on 1-18-21 if extended, or 2-22-21. 21 if extended twice. Would any of my colleagues like to start by asking some of their questions? And again, this is CB 53, which is an installment purchase for land in Turf Valley for $6 million from the Mangione family. Nobody would like to start? Uh, yes, Vice Chair Walsh, thank you. Thanks, Chair Young. Um, I was hoping maybe the, the school board, the school system, or DPW, I don't really care who, could tell us some background in terms of how this 10 acres was selected and priced and what advantages or not it has over um, the 41-acre property that's on the other side of Turf Valley that we've uh, been in possession of since 2007. So I don't know, Chair Ellis, if you have that information, or um, Mr. Siddiqui, or Mr. Washington. Thank you for letting me know. I'm glad that we do have staff here who has more specifics on that particular information, because I think I heard uh, Ms. Walsh also ask about another parcel of land to be considered. So I'm not sure if that's who on our staff can respond to that. Mr. Siddiqui, Mr. Washington, Mr. Lovely. Okay. Um, Good afternoon, uh, Chair Ellis, Council, Council Chair Young, Board Members, County Council Members. This is John Dabsadiki, Chief Administrative Officer. The what we believe is the 41 acres that the school district um, is in possession of at this point in time for in Turf Valley, and why are we buying or recommending that another piece of property be bought in Turf Valley for a school at this point? And this is Dan Lubley, Acting Director, Capital Planning and Construction with the school system. Uh, specifically towards the 10 acres within the Turf Valley site, uh, that site was originally looked at, or the Turf Valley site was originally looked at due to the expansive nature of that development. Um, as Ms. as Council Member Walsh noted, we do currently have in our land bank 41 acres across 144. At this point, within the Howard County Public School System land bank, the majority of the property that is within that land bank is of the size to accommodate an elementary school. That 41 acres that was identified in that area is the only current land that we have within our land bank that would be appropriate size for a middle school. Therefore, a request was placed on the Turf Valley um, development to see if it would be possible to obtain land there specifically for an elementary school. And that's one of the primary reasons that we're looking for originally the 12 acres, now a 10 acre parcel in that development to help with the elementary school site. It also has the benefit of being within the Turf Valley development to aid in the walking for the elementary school level. Whereas if we were to place an elementary school on the 41 acres, uh, we would have to have the walkers who would still be within that mile either cross over 144 or be allocated to bus drivers or bus riders rather. Uh, Ms. Walsh, do you have any follow-up questions to that? Sure. So, you know, an issue before us now is this parcel CC2, I think. Oh. Was that, was, again, I'm just looking for background. How, how did then the, the school board, the school system, Department of Public Works arrive at parcel CC2 instead of some other portion of the undeveloped parcels of Turf Valley? 
Again, this is Dan Lugley, Acting Director, Capital Planning and Construction. Uh, I would invite Ms. Amy Gowan or Mr. Jeff Ronauer to um, please to fill in as far as the actual site selection. Um, my brief knowledge is this is the parcel that was identified and offered by um, Mr. Mangione and his development. I could be wrong on that, so I would ask if Ms. Gowan or somebody from Howard County Department of Planning Zoning could expand on that. Uh, maybe Mr. Munair from DPW. If you're familiar with this um, project and this land acquisition. I'm familiar with this project and land acquisition, but as far as how the site was chosen, I believe that's probably more in Amy Gowan's um, purview than mine. Okay. Ms. Director Gowan? Hi. Good afternoon. So I honestly, good afternoon. I do not have a history as to why this site was chosen. My understanding was there was a reservation of land placed on this site by the district. Um, so my understanding is that it was this land was chosen by the school district um, and it was reserved for this purpose. Okay, let's go back to the school district. Somebody might know why this land was chosen. So let me go back for just a minute. Okay, um, when we went through redistricting, I believe it was in 2017, um, there was the question about having an elementary school over in the Turf Valley area. And it seems like at that time there was this discussion um, made with the developer about us actually having land there. Now, my recollection is not um, terribly accurate, but I do recall that that, that particular um, area of land was offered to the school system by the developer. It wasn't really picked out by the school system. It was that at the time we were going through redistricting before in 2017, that uh, area of land was offered to the school system. So I'd like uh, someone else who might have remembered that, who was on the board at that time, or either active in the community, recall exactly how we got the land, but it was not decided by the board. I see Ms. Coombs has her hand raised. Yeah, I mean, because um, you and I are the only ones that are um, old board members per se. Um, and it was really um, just, we needed some land, we needed 10 acres and um, that was deemed to be a decent site. Um, and obviously it hadn't been built on yet. So um, it was kind of, it wasn't really um, that we went to, to find the exact spot. It was what was offered there. I mean, there, there were probably discussions, you know, back before Ms. Ellis and I were on the board um, about, about the land. But um, I do agree with Mr. Lubley. I haven't heard, um, other past board members made the comment about the 41 acres not being a good site for an elementary school. Um, we wanted a site that was internal to the development so that it would be suitable for walkers. Um, and um, we also wanted land that was not, um, uh, that was not, um, what do I want to say, um, hurt by, not necessarily hurt, um, because the, the of course, in existence and the chemicals that are used on golf courses. So um, I think that was also something that we were, um, that we talked about in that um, it needs to be suitable um, in terms of the, the physical land and not needing too much remediation as far as environmental suitability. Thank you, Ms. Coombs. And I see that uh, before I get to you, Mr. Youngman, uh, see that Dr. Maradorano has joined us and he had his hand up and I'm thinking maybe he can answer this question. <laughs> yes, um, thank you. Good afternoon, council members and board members uh, and staff. Um, I just wanna verify that what uh, board member Coombs and Chair Ellis just said is uh, my recollection of that and the, the accuracy of that process that those that site was offered uh, as a need for addressing uh, the growth for an elementary school in that particular region of the county. Uh, good afternoon once again, thank you. And uh, Mr. Youngman. Um, I, I go back, I guess, to 16, 17 as well, not in an official role, but I recall two of the criteria in addition to the, the 10 acres being 
Um, we didn't want it too far back into the neighborhood. Wanted it kind of on that on a main street, and it needed to be relatively flat. And a lot of that um, a lot of that turf alley development area has a crazy topography, you know, almost like a golf course. Um, so if everybody knows where this property is, it is on what is sort of, you know, sort of the main collector that's going to run throughout that new part of Turf Valley, just up from the village center, and it is flat. Um, that's all I remember. Thank so, you. My two cents. And I saw that Ms. Catrunio had her hand up. Yes. Yeah, the, um, we originally acquired the 41 acres as part of a land swap with a church um, to address the growing needs and a potential site for a middle school in the future. Um, but uh, the delays in getting elementary school has kind of made me look back towards that site. Um, and I tried to get answers to why we haven't um, moved on that because we do need both an elementary and a middle school. Um, and it hasn't really been part of the um, our capital improvement plan or even our long term plan to build there. So I, I've sort of brought this up. Um, why aren't we looking at that if it can help expedite building a school since we already own the site and if 41 acres aren't buildable, maybe there's, I know it's an odd shaped plot of land, but I just, I think we should really determine whether is that site even buildable or should we even continue to hold on to it if we're never going to build on it. Um, and Ms. that's Coutinho, why I, I've when you say. Been, in the, Ms. Katrina, when you say is that site even buildable, are you you're referring to the 41 right. acres? 41 acres, right? Okay. Because I've heard lots of stories about it, and so I just I think, um, and Ms. Walsh has the same questions. Um, why aren't we considering that? Um, because it is, and like Mr. Youngman said, the site within the that we're um, that's this legislation, it's really tucked back into the community, and there is a risk of building um, so far into a community. What if the um, demographics change? Um, in the future, which I don't anticipate for Turf Valley, but um, I think there'll always be lots of kids in that development. But um, that's sort of the history. It was a land exchange to, to build our land bank, bank um, back when we, it was hard to find large plots of land, and that's how we ended up with it, with a local church. Thank you. Ms. Catrino, can I ask a follow-up question to that? Or, or, or maybe Mr. Uh -oh. Washington knows this as well. Um, what, what is the minimum acreage that's required for middle school? Fifteen is the minimum, right? Is the fifteen uh, is the ideal? It's, it's it's pretty much, and Ms. Lubley, correct me once again. I think pretty much for the most part, with the high school we want thirty, with the middle we want twenty, and with elementary we want ten. But plus, you want another uh, acre for every hundred kids. So it depends on the size of the middle school. So it would start with the twenty acres, Mr. Lubley, and add up depending on the size of the middle school that would be there. So in the case of a 700 or an 800 um, capacity middle school, it will be another additional acreage on top of that. Okay, but for so, you're, you're looking at the minimum, um, which is 30 for a middle and 10 for an elementary. So the 41-acre parcel is actually big enough to build a middle and an elementary school? Probably not. Yeah, probably probably not. Depend, depending on the usable, the actual usability of the area of the land or the usable area of the land, you want at least a twenty, and I would say for a middle school probably an additional, like I said, a hundred. But I mean, an acre for every hundred kids, so you're probably looking more around twenty-eight acres for a decent sized middle school to be sitting there as well. Um, but again, also you have to look at what part of that acres is usable. So we won't. We don't want to cut that too close. Understanding, we need to look at that before we just make an offset. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, so let me ask you, Mr. Washington, have you done an assessment sure. of that 41 acres of that property? We've done an assessment of that acreage, if I'm not mistaken. But it, it, the, the material is actually dated. It's something that we need to go back and explore because, again, that property, as Ms. Petrino said, was something that was purchased, I think, about 15 years ago or so. So not anything recent, but something that was older. Okay, so I just wanted to add very quickly to what Ms. Caternio was saying. Yes, we did the, the land swap for the 41 acres, and then we were offered the 10 acres for the elementary school. So um, the school system had not put out dollars for that, and it was not in our land bank. But the 41 acres, it seems like I remember uh, that there were questions about the suitability of all of that those acres for a school. Just like sometimes you have wetlands and all of the rest of that, that means that you can't use 
some portions of that land. I think that was something that had been discussed before. Okay, I have another question then. Um, Ms. Wait. Young, um, yeah. if, can I ask a question? Um, Ms. Walsh, I think you had also mentioned something about the, um, the monetary value of the, of the land. And I would, like to, I would like to know about that too, if anybody has, a, has an answer um, as far as how the, um, the uh, amount of money was, was arrived on. So uh, again, Ms. Coombs, I was actually, I was gonna ask something along those lines as well. When you say the monetary value, Ms. Coombs, are you referring to the 41 acres then? Or the no, 10 acres? I'm talking about the 10 acres that we're talking about, this, this, particular, um, this particular tract of land. Okay, I was wondering about. Oh, and Dr. I see Dr. Wu has joined us as well. I saw that as well. So I was actually wondering about the 41 acres, and what the school district paid for the 41 acres, and if that land well, that was a swap. usable. That was a swap for the um, for the Tamar uh, land, right? The Tamar so it the must Hutton be Parkway land. So, Mr. Washington, let me get you back. Um, that land must be worth something. It's 41 acres. Um, do we know what the 41 acres is worth? And if it isn't usable for a school, is there some way to sell that and use that money to buy the, the acreage for the elementary school? I think the key is that it's, it's usable for a school, but how much is the concern? And that's where we're talking about the assessment piece. Out of that 41 acres, I do believe we do have the 28 that we would need for a school of a larger size. Uh, like I said, Mr. Lou, you can you can check me on that just to make sure. Um, like I said, because that's one of the reasons why we've held on to that land for so long, because we do feel that even though there are some portions that may be of a little concern, we do have enough there to actually build a school. Um, but I think that that was one of the main concerns there. Um, was there any concerns there, Mr. Luby, also about the potential of the road widening situation that may have to happen in the school puts there? Yes, good afternoon again. Uh, the county is currently doing a project at looking at widening the intersection there at Marysville Road and 144. Uh, we've had some conversation with regards to getting in and doing some work there. Uh, I do want to reiterate, as Mr. Washington said, while that entire site is looking at approximately 41 acres, it is a relatively box site with a dog leg that comes out to Marysville Road. While the entire 41 acres may not be entirely usable for a school, there are portions of it that do have forest conservation on it. We have done some internal um, review of the site, and we do believe even with the grades on that site, it would still be suitable for a school, um, maybe not our prototype, but maybe an archetype for a middle school on that site. So it still would be potentially usable. I guess I personally would like to see something in writing about this 41 acres before approving another purchase of a school site out in, in that area to know exactly what that property is worth, if we could sell some portion of it off, is, what is it going to be used for. Um, that, you know, those are all questions that I would like to see uh, in a report from the school district before making a decision on this other piece of property. And I see Ms. Rigby has joined us. So I assume that you do not have a broken link at this point. So, and your hand is up. Don't forget to unmute yourself. <laughs> Thank you. No, I, I finally made it in. I was like trying different computers and phones. It was, um, it was a wild ride, but I'm in and thank you for everyone who got me here. So I, I just wanted to confirm what I heard. So Mr. Lugley, Mr. Washington, you're saying that we, the site that you have for a middle school is available to build a middle school on it. Potentially it might have more green space on it with wetlands or steep slopes or whatever the things that make the build provide the constraints for building, but that you do have, you know, a middle school site, a middle school can be built on that 41 acres. That is correct, um, but I, 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 I hear the concerns that you have been voiced, and I know also at the same time, uh, since that has been voiced recently at a, one of our recent board meetings, it may be a situation because the research is older on that site, if necessary, we can of course do an assessment and uh, ask you just have that, just to have something more updated on the site. Uh, does not change our position on the need for the Turf Valley site, 
but also just to answer the questions that people are having about that particular site, um, maybe an assessment can be done. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. I just really want to, I, I feel like I've heard stories and rumors, but I just, you're here now and I want the opportunity to get the facts. So thank you. Um, and then so I'll that? Um, and then because, so that's where we're looking for the middle school and then we need the capacity for an elementary school. And that's why we're looking at Turf Valley to keep it walkable, dense, or denser down there. Is that correct? Okay, thank you. Mr. Youngman. Um, I've been asking about this 41 acres for some time because 41 acres of developable, you know, other 41 developable acres, you can put an elementary and a middle school on. And I've been wondering why we weren't already advancing the elementary school. I think the Board of Ed made pretty clear and I, and given the cost of transportation, I think is a valid issue that you create a whole lot of walkers if the Turf Valley Elementary School is in Turf Valley. Also, if anybody wants to look at the satellite map of this 41 acres south of Route 40, half of it is wooded. We've spent a lot of time as a county council talking about clear cutting trees and unless we're, we're prepared to make that 41 developable acres versus about in the low 20 acres buildable and the rest woods, then you're not getting a second school there. We still need a middle school. We are so far behind in talking about this Turf Valley Elementary School site. I'm having a tough time. I mean, with the legislation pending that we're going to talk about today, having a hard time figuring out why we're just now asking for studies on this 41 acres. Um, I've been asking about it for some time and have been convinced that you cannot get two schools on that 41 acres unless we're going to take down all those trees. Thank you, Mr. Youngman. And thank you for reminding us of the forest conservation legislation that well, we that passed. That was my pleasure. I know. <laughs> I knew it would be. And, um, and all legitimate points and that gets back to please mr washington can you get us something in writing about the 41 acre parcel so that we are more familiar with it and it helps to inform us on our decision regarding this um, new purchase that we're just now seeing this month i think that would be very helpful we'll follow up okay great um I do have some more questions um, about this parcel. Um, and I guess some of these questions might be for Mr. Munair, Director Munair, or Ms. Bishop. Um, there was a, uh, in the auditor's analysis, um, there was a, a, a notation about the fact that the county entered into an executed letter of intent dated March 30th, 2018 for the purchase of approximately 15.1 acres at a purchase price of 5,750,000. The total acreage referenced in this letter included parcels of land that are inconsistent with what is stated in the legislation as verified by DPW. The DPW is not aware of plans to acquire the additional land stated in this letter. So there are a couple things that I would like to follow up with DPW on this issue. One, um, we have not seen the letter of intent. So I would really appreciate it if you could send us a letter, a copy of the letter of intent. Director Munair. Yes, I think that's possible. Melanie? Yes, I can send it over. Thank you, Melanie. We would appreciate that. Um, yep. Also, uh, in the description of this piece of land, it's labeled as non-buildable bulk parcel containing approximately 10.1 acres. And I don't understand why the original sale price for this acreage was for 15 acres, 
for five million seven hundred thousand. And now there is only ten acres, and the price is still five million seven hundred thousand. So, if in two thousand eighteen we were prepared to buy fifteen acres for five million seven hundred thousand, why would we be paying the same price for ten acres、uh, two years later? Director Munair, Ms. Bishop. Melanie, did you want to give some background as to those numbers? Um, so I know that the purchase price、um, was had been previously negotiated.、Um, in the you know there were appraisals, there were a number of appraisals done、um, that do support that sales price. I saw that there were a number of appraisals that were done, and we would also like, or I would like, a copy of those appraisals. I'm sure that the council would appreciate having a copy of all those appraisals. Um, but that doesn't explain why we are now buying the same, why we are buying a different amount of acreage for the same amount amount of money. That I don't don't understand. Why wouldn't we be paying less since we're only getting a third of what we were initially going to be purchasing? Right. So and, and I understand.、Um, so the the value of what we're paying is still below the appraisal.、Um, the appraisal still supports the sales price. Was the appraisal that we haven't seen for the 15 acres or for the 10 acres?、Um, so there were appraisals done on the 12 acres, and there was one done on the 10 acres. We have another one coming in for the 10 acres that's still being worked on. Um, I don't have anything for 15 acres. Well, that was the original amount of land in the purchase agreement. So, I don't. I, I think the parcel changed. I think. Right, and I, I guess I think the, it was the up letter to 15 acres. It was it approximately sort of... 15.1 acres. Yeah, that's what it was. Right. So the only thing that I. That I could guess is that the the acreage changed and the letter of intent was never reflected to show that. So that would be nice again, like I said, if we can get the letter of intent, if we can compare that to what we do have right now, what documents we do have, and if we could also receive a copy of all the appraisals, which we don't have any of. So any appraisals you could send us would be informative.、Um, And、uh, I guess the other thing, my last question about this was: it says it's non-buildable bulk parcel. What does non-buildable bulk parcel mean?、Um, so on that, I'll have to see if Amy Gowan can, because that's part of DPZ. Okay, Director Gowan. All right.、Um, so, bulk parcels are usually established as a means to phase a development.、Um, so, it just means that basically, as they're moving through, that this parcel kind of gets set aside or reserved.、Um, it, it can't be developed、um, at the current stage, but it allows you to phase it so it's available for future development. So, what does the non-buildable refer to then? Does that that doesn't refer then to the fact it, that it can't be it, built upon, or right? What it, just, does, it just means that it doesn't have a development.、Uh, it doesn't have a development right at the time it's established. It's in a later phase, right? It Correct. So it does still have development rights, just phased. Yes, it can be subdivided in the future. Um, if the if there is available density, but at the time,、um, it, it basically just like allows you to establish a bulk parcel so that you can phase your development, and then it's like setting it aside、um, for the future. Okay, because I'm trying to understand if it's not 
buildable right now, wouldn't that make the right. property worth less? I don't. I mean, I don't know. I, I, no, I, don't I have think that no would idea. It, 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 it doesn't mean it doesn't have anything to do with the uh, amount of allowable density. It's okay. it's really just a way to create a subdivision plat and set aside a parcel for future development later. So if somebody wants to phase a development and they want to move forward and they want to create a plat and they want to plat the roads um, and perhaps other units and then set aside a portion of land for like a, a later phase, that's how they typically do it. All right. Thank you, Director Gallon. Does anybody, uh, Mr. Youngman? Oh. Melanie, when are we going to have the appraisal in on this, the updated? Um, so the updated appraisal for the 10 acres should be in within a couple of weeks. I think about two weeks, one or two weeks. Because we, we went through, I, I think we went through this whole discussion on that Route 108 parcel, is you have the acreage value of like raw land just by acre, but then you have the value of the housing units and the density that you get per acre. So if you did adjust down by two acres, you know, right? It, it, it it's not like two acres on my property with one house. It, you know, some some unit, um, some developable units are going to come off of that. So that's going to impact the value. It so, should. Um, look forward to seeing that appraisal. Okay. Um. um <clears throat> Uh, well, Ms. Vice Chair Walsh and then Mr. Glenn Denning. I don't know if I should, if I should wait for Mr. Glenn Denning to go first, but my, my concerns also relate to this issue of, of the true appraised value of this property and based on what, if, if this was a reservation as is contemplated in Section 16122 of the Code, then the value of the land should be its undeveloped um, value. And I'm, I'm not sure we're tracking that. I'm, I'm still not sure from the explanation that this council received today in this work session if that's actually the origin story of how we arrived at parcel C22. Um, if you look at the land records, though, I see a recent transaction, 2018, that purports to be arm's length, where that same 10.18 acres of property was sold for $1 million. So... Um, hmm. I, it seems bananas to me, but I'm looking at it because I'm looking at the same, you know, overhead view that Mr. Youngman probably referenced. Both that 10 acres and the 40 acres have a sizable um, forested landmass on them. But I would imagine there's some economy of scale and economy of disruption that can be done if, if, if a 41 acre site is actually best for two school sites and then, um, and then another site is not actually disturbed. Um, but we know that's not going to happen if, if, if we don't go ahead with this uh, acquisition. In addition to the documents that you requested, Ms. Young, I would also be interested in whatever analysis has been performed as to the suitability of both properties, the 41 and the 10, to actually cite these schools. What environmental analysis has been done to make sure that they aren't subject to some remediation obligation and what kind of environmental resources we have there that we would, um, in fact, have to destroy in order to construct schools or anything else there. Um, but that's all I have. Thank you. Um, who who should we, I, I guess we would ask the school district who owns the 41 acres to do that analysis for us. And we would ask our own county departments to look into an environmental analysis and buildability analysis um, for the 10 acres. And I see your hand, Ms. Catrunio. Um, I will call on you after I, after Mr. Glenn Denning speaks. Mr. Glenn Denning. Okay. Oh, just just a couple of things. I did forward you the letter of intent. I got it. it. This is, is, I love this. This is, this is, this is the immediate, if you're actually in the office, what you get. Yes, I like that. Um, and then the other thing I was going to comment on, there, when they last did, there were two evaluation uh, appraisals done a couple of years ago on the 12 acres. And they did have, and I, I gave it to you in the fiscal impact analysis, so they were, one said 5.8 million, the other said 7 million, so they're a little bit different. But from what I got from DPW is 
you know, because of the code says you have to have two appraisals, they went out and got another, or they're getting another appraisal, but it doesn't matter what it's coming back as. It's not going to affect the sales price, apparently. Um, I don't know if that's a question right now for DPW, but that's the response we got in an email. But. So even if it came back at a much lower price, because we're not going to buy a portion of it that would be developable still to the owner of the land, right. we are going to pay them $6 million no matter what. It doesn't matter what it's coming back at. That's my understanding. I guess there's an agreement already, so it doesn't really matter what the appraisal comes back as. Well, it matters to us. It does matter to us. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Clintonian, and thank you, Mr. Youngman. It does. Yes. Uh, Ms. Catrunio. I just got some information from astute observer, Mr. Hurwitz. Um, he, um, <laughs> he, he, he is an astute observer. Feet. Yes. He is very astute, and I sometimes get nervous when I guess, <laughs> because he is very astute. But um, it wasn't just a, um, a straight land swap. We did purchase for $1.7 million the um, 41 acres in 2007. So maybe a portion of it was a swap, but we did spend, one, according to... Um, document that Mr. Hurwitz just sent to me. So I wanted to make that clear. And I know we were talking about the um, environmental assessments. We've done two phase one environmental assessments. Is that correct? Is that what was said, Mr. Washington? That is correct. We have already done uh, the phase one analysis for the property. Uh, and I think that because of the timeliness, we had to do it in another one. Um, Mr. Lubley, was a phase two needed as well or just a phase one of that property? With regards to the 12 acres in the Turf Valley site, uh, a phase one and a follow-up phase two was included. Uh, the phase one did identify approximately 393 square feet within one of the parcels of the Turf Valley site that had questionable, questionable material. So a phase two was completed, and that is what led to the board's discussion and deciding to go with the 10 acres, which does not include that portion. So we do have the environmental site assessments we can provide. And also just to follow up on uh, Chair Young's question, we did have an engineer take a look at that 10 acres and site one of our prototypes on it. So we do have a conceptual layout that shows that that 10 acres can be utilized as a school site. Oh, that would be great, Mr. Lubley. We would love to get that to help us be better informed on this decision. Absolutely, we'd be happy to provide that. So both the environmental oh, sites and the school siting. I'm sorry, Ms. Rigby, did you? Um, I just wanted to let the council know that um, Mr. Myers had sent around CR88, um, which approved the swap from the um, from Tamar Drive to Marriottsville, which has some supporting documentation for it about that 41-acre parcel. Who, who sent that around? Uh, Mr. Myers, Jeff Myers from our oh, staff. Oh, okay, good. Um, uh, so Jeff Brownell also sent some information around. The swap was, um, if everybody can picture the intersection of Tamar and 175, there's that um, St. something church. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The, the school system. St. John's owned, Baptist. Thank you. St. John's Baptist. Right. The, the schools. The school we system the owned. The school system owned that site, which was was getting small for a uh, for a school and was right on the highway. Um, St. John the Baptist owned this 41 acres, so it was a swap, but the, the relative sizes were way off. So um, I think they appraised both, and the difference was in that 1.7. So it was a swap, plus we paid them 1.7 because their 41 acres was worth more than that. I, th I would imagine that's in what Mr. Myers just sent us. Okay. Um, council colleagues, other questions? I have a few more questions, but I, I don't want to take up all the time here. No? No more from? Okay. So uh, I guess this question, I'm not sure who's up here to answer this question. Um, maybe Director Munair? I'm kind of curious where we're getting the money from. I see that it's a two-phase land installment contract. Um, the council was told over and over again during our budget um, last year that we had no money extra money for anything, including for the um, senior center in um, the eastern part of Columbia. And now this two-part installment contract, which has to be paid in two separate years, 
uh, would begin in this fiscal year. So that's three million, and then would take the second installment would uh, be paid in 2022. And this capital budget item was not in the 21 budget. It was in the 22 budget. There was a zero line for this purchase in the 21 budget. So I don't know who can respond to that. Somebody from the administration. I see Maureen Arthurs is on the line. I don't know if We've, she. We've, I'm just going to jump to the chase. We've already authorized four of that in prior capital budgets. It was the capital budget before us was the first two. Last year we did the second two million, and we didn't do the third two million this year because of those issues and the fact that the Board of Ed hadn't signed off on the site yet. Um, and to be clear, the senior center was in the budget, but it was cut and removed. So it, it was set down for approval of funding. Because I, I looked at the budget and there was zero. It looks like there was zero, zero for this year, and I and I did question it because obviously I've been motivated to get this this site under control, but because of the budget situation, um, and the fact that the board of ed, I mean, the reason why we had to get a second phase one done was because so much time elapsed from the time that the first one was done. So it just inaction. By them, like with all the different priorities, it, it's that last $2 million just didn't make it into the capital budget this year. Hopefully it will make it into the capital budget this upcoming year. Unless the land turns out to be worth $4 million and not 6 So then we already have the um, money we need. Um, all right, so let's see. I think those are all the questions I have. I don't know, um, Mr. Glenn Denning, if you, you know, that looked like there might have been a few items that you were still looking for for your fiscal analysis. I don't know if we have touched on all those now. Is there anything um, else that I you need? I think we're good. We're just waiting for that other. I think we're just waiting for that other appraisal at this point. Um, yeah, I mean, the whole point, you're right, we don't have the funding totally, which is what the whole point of them coming to you to do this agreement is to basically tie up next budget's money. So what they're looking for then is for, the, for us to say now in 21 that we will give you the $2 million that you need in 22. Pretty much. Alrighty. Uh, any Craig other? To the chase, doesn't it? Ms. Walsh, did you have a question? No. Okay. All right. All right. That looks like then we are done with this issue, which I do not think would take this long. I have to admit. Um,